Your social anxiety is not a disorder. It's just anxiety in social situations. No matter how much of it you might be feeling, it's still not a mental disorder. There is no specific amount of social anxiety felt that turns it into a disorder. You have been lied to. There is nothing physically wrong with your brain and you don't have a mental disease. We have been led to believe that social anxiety disorder is based on medicine and science, but nothing could be further from the truth. Many people are shocked to find this out and so was I. I myself was diagnosed with social anxiety disorder when I was 16 years old and prescribed psychiatric drugs. The psychiatrist that prescribed the medication had only talked to me for about 10 minutes before deciding on her treatment. This is a sham and an enormous number of people are suffering because of it. In this video, I will show you why some people would like you to buy into the social anxiety disorder myth and why you should run away from anybody that suggests it. Note, I am in no way, shape or form disavowing the pain and suffering you are going through. Believe me, I know what it feels like. All I am saying is that if we want to completely overcome our social anxiety, we need to change the way we look at the problem. Understand that having social anxiety disorder is only a label that you either choose to accept or reject. I rejected the label and when I did, my social anxiety got way better and I think it can do the same for you. The first reason why social anxiety disorder is actually not a real disorder is that there's an economic incentive to keep the social anxiety as a disorder myth alive. Some like to promote the idea that social anxiety is a disorder. That's because seeing our social anxiety as a disorder commands the use of prescription drugs. It's the main reason why the psychiatric industry wants you to believe that your social anxiety is caused by a malfunctioning in your brain. They are in the business of making money, and lots of it. The psychiatric industry is a $330 billion industry. Now would it be too crazy to think that since a huge pool of money can be made from prescribing drugs for mental disorders, that some people might have an incentive to keep this myth alive? No, the answer is that it's not crazy. They do this because the only way to justify the use of prescription medication for mental disorders is if the problem was physical in nature. Using drugs to fix social anxiety disorder only makes sense if the cause of your social anxiety would be because of a defective brain or chemical imbalance as they call it. But as you'll see later, the chemical imbalance in the brain theory has been falsified and is unproven. So what would happen if people started to catch on to this lie? The whole psychiatric industry would collapse. There's a reason why half of the commercials on TV is an ad for Big Pharma. If people stopped believing this myth, no money could be made from it. Furthermore, psychiatrists are in the business of providing prescription medication. That's how they make their livelihood. So a psychiatrist that tells his patient that they are okay and that they do not suffer from any mental illnesses is not going to stay very busy. So here lays another incentive for prescribing medication. By doing this, a psychiatrist can get a lifetime client that are sold the idea that the only solution to their defective brain is a cocktail of meds for the rest of their days. It's complete nonsense. Reason number two, mental disorders are voted into existence. Yup, you've heard right. All mental disorders have been voted into existence. A group of psychiatrists get together every year and decide which mental illness will be or will not be added to the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders. Now does that sound like a very scientific approach to you? Yeah, me neither. The truth is that when it comes to psychiatry, mental illnesses are invented instead of being discovered. The DSM only exists to help psychiatrists prescribe drugs. Even psychiatrists themselves admit that the way mental disorders are brought into existence is flawed. Here's what a couple of them had to say. There are no objective tests in psychiatry, no x-ray, laboratory or exam finding that says definitely that someone does or does not have a mental disorder. Alan Francis. The way things get into the DSM is not based on blood tests or brain scan or physical findings. It's based on descriptions of behaviors. And that's what the whole psychiatry system is. 
Dr. Colin Ross. We can manufacture enough diagnostic labels of normal variability of mood and talk that we can continually supply medication to you. But when it comes to manufacturing disease, nobody does it as good as psychiatry. Dr. Stefan Kruziski. Reason number three. Some of the mental disorders voted in the DSM are also voted out. Take for example homosexuality. It was once considered by psychiatrists as a mental illness, but now they took it out of the DSM. Now tell me, if mental disorders were based on scientific research, why could they just decide next year that it was no longer a mental disease? The answer is simple. It's because mental illnesses are added and removed from existence because of economic and political reasons, not science. I don't know about you, but I would much rather have solid medical proof that my social anxiety is caused by a malfunctioning of my brain before I'm giving harmful drugs. Considering that there are 42,000 deaths per year related and caused by prescription medication, why are we so quick to jump to the conclusion that these people have our best interests in mind? They clearly have more interest in lining their pockets with money off of our suffering. Reason number four, diagnosing mental disorders is decided upon observation only. You would think that the diagnosis for something as serious and potentially harmful as having a mental disorder would go through rigorous tests before jumping to the conclusion, right? But yet again, this is not the case. The diagnosis for whether or not you have social anxiety disorder is often done in under 15 minutes and relies solely on answers given to specific questions. Now am I supposed to believe that someone I've never met and who doesn't know anything about me could conclude that there's a problem inside my brain simply by asking me a couple of questions? Unfortunately, many people fall for this. Using this logic, whether or not you have a mental disorder is entirely subjective to the person doing the diagnosis. Is this much anxiety a disorder or is that much anxiety? There is no concrete standard that could clearly define whether or not you are mentally ill. Why give someone that much power over our lives? Especially when 99% of the time, their only cure will be medication. You can rest assured that in today's day and age, a psychiatric diagnosis is synonymous to psychiatric drugs. Reason number five, no social anxiety gene has ever been found. If no social anxiety gene has ever been found, this then dismantles any of the genetic predisposition arguments portrayed by the psychiatric industry. Their claims are unfounded. Unlike real medical diseases, which can be looked at and tested for, mental disorders seem to be based solely on opinions and whether or not you accept the label given to you. This means that social anxiety disorder only exists if you decide to. It also means that social anxiety disorder is backed by nothing more than confidence. Do you have confidence in the person doing the diagnosis? Do you have confidence in the viability of the drug commercials portrayed on TV? Sadly, many people believe anything that is coming out of the mouth with someone wearing a white trench coat. The fact that no social anxiety gene has ever been found leaves more evidence to believe that social anxiety is not genetic or hereditary, but actually environmental, caused by your past experiences and how you live your life on a daily basis. Reason number six, placebos work as well as medication. Placebos are substances, often just a sugar pill, that have no therapeutic effects on the patient. It is meant to test the viability and effectiveness of actual drugs to see if they actually work compared to placebos. And new studies are finding out that much of the approved drug treatments for most anxiety disorders, such as antidepressant, SSRIs and beta blockers provide little benefits compared to a placebo. So this begs the question, if the drugs don't work, might that be because the diagnosis is flawed? I believe so. The only reason why the drugs aren't fixing the mental illness is because there was never a mental illness in the first place. Nothing is wrong with your brain. Your problem has to do with how you think and behave in your day to day. The medication approach only deals with the symptoms and does not deal with the root cause of social anxiety. Psychiatrists will try and convince you that psychotropic drugs are just like mainstream medical drugs. But is this really the case? The answer is no. You see, unlike drugs like insulin for example that correct a proven and measurable imbalance in the body, psychotropic medication have no visible 
or measurable physical abnormality to correct. Plus, the potential small beneficial effects from the drug seem to be outweighed by harmful effects, aka the side effects. Oftentimes, taking the medication road to deal with your social anxiety can make it worse in the long term. This happens because taking medication to deal with our anxious feelings acts exactly like a control behavior, which is directly related to increasing our level of anxiety in social situations. Reason number seven, social anxiety is not a mental condition, it's simply anxiety in social situations. Many people believe that feeling social anxiety is bad. They believe this because at every turn, our culture tells us that having negative emotion somehow means that we are doing life wrong. But the truth is that everybody feels anxiety in social situations from time to time. This is totally normal and healthy. Some people feel only a small amount of it and others feel an extreme amount. My entire website is dedicated to helping the later understand why his or her social anxiety is so high and share tested practical advice on how to reduce and eventually overcome it naturally. The difference is when people start to see their social anxiety as a problem on its own instead of seeing social anxiety for what it actually is, just anxiety that you feel in social situations. When we say, I have social anxiety, rather than I feel social anxiety, it's as if the social anxiety, a normal emotion that everybody feels from time to time, automatically transforms into a disorder. We say, I have social anxiety, in the same way we say, I have diabetes, or I have the flu, but the two are not the same at all. You feel social anxiety from time to time, but you don't have social anxiety disorder. Psychiatrists turns normal everyday human emotions into a mental illness that needs to be handled with drugs. And even though you might feel a lot more social anxiety than most, this does not make it a mental illness. Instead of calling it social anxiety disorder, a better, more accurate way to depict the situation is to call it disordered social anxiety. This points out that your anxiety is too elevated for your taste, but you keep yourself from fusing with the label. Don't get me wrong, people do suffer in life and go through very difficult periods. I am not denying the existence of social anxiety, but I don't buy that my social anxiety is a result of a broken brain, and neither should you. I saw firsthand how changing my daily habits can have a massive impact on my overall level of social anxiety, and I'm 100% certain that they will help you also. Reason number 8. Psychiatry is not recognized in the medical field. It's not based on science. The words disorder, illness, and condition pack a hell of a punch on our psyche. It makes us believe that our brain is broken or malfunctioning. This is in part due to the fact that these words are often construed with their medical terms. On the biological level, words like these point to something being physically wrong with the way our body works. But as much as psychiatry would love you to believe this about your social anxiety, it is a lie fabricated to sell you drugs. The diagnosis for a problem like social anxiety are all theoretical and are not based on scientific measurements. This is because your social anxiety has a lot more to do with your thinking, emotional and behavioral habits than with having a defective brain. Social anxiety is a symptom of how you live your life. It's the result of environmental factors such as your upbringing, the beliefs you hold, your past experiences, and much more importantly, how you deal with the anxiety today. Psychiatry cannot prove that any of their so-called mental disorders are biological in nature. The bottom line is this. The number one goal of modern psychiatry is to gain more and more psychiatric turf so that they can sell us more drugs. Reason number 9. The chemical imbalance in the brain theory has been falsified numerous times. Psychiatry's cornerstone argument for the existence of social anxiety disorder is the chemical imbalance in the brain theory. And even though this is widely believed and accepted by most people today, there is actually no scientific evidence supporting it. This theory suggests that the reason why people develop psychiatric disorders like social anxiety disorder is that neurotransmitters are misfiring inside the brain and that medication can be used to regulate these imbalances. 
Their reasoning is simple. Since the drug alleviates certain psychiatric conditions, then that is proof that there was a chemical imbalance in the first place. But this reasoning is also flawed because it would suggest that everybody on planet Earth has a chemical imbalance in the brain using their form of measurements. It's kind of like saying that because aspirin stops headaches, that headaches are caused by the deficiency of aspirin. It's complete bogus. The chemical imbalance theory is just a clever tactic meant to trick people into believing that their difficulty can be only cured by the use of medication. There's nothing scientific about their methods. Their bible, the DSM, acts more like a marketing tool for selling the unsuspecting public on mental disorders and the specific drugs to treat them. What's even worse is that most often than not, once someone is put on these dangerous mind-altering drug treatments, they become lifetime patients. There's no end in sight. You have a disease and the only thing you can do is treat the symptoms. Here you go, take your pills. And if that wasn't bad enough, people build tolerances towards the drugs that are giving to them and after a while, the drugs loses its effect. So psychiatrists regularly increases the patient's dosage or adds other medications to the treatment. Meanwhile, we are supposed to ignore the fact that antidepressants do not address the root cause of the problem. They are the cause of 42,000 deaths per year and many patients develop a dependence on these drugs which can bring on a slew of other problems. Reason number 10. No biological test can prove the existence of social anxiety disorder or any other mental illness. Despite what you have been led to believe, there is no urine or blood test, MRI, PET scan, x-ray or biopsy that has ever validated the theory that the reason why you have social anxiety is that of biochemical factors. Compare this to real medical diseases like cancer for example. A pathologist would very easily be able to see and identify its cell type under a microscope. But no anomaly can be seen or verified conclusively with mental disorders. It's all improvised. It's all conjecture and speculation. Psychiatry uses bogus claims to turn normal human emotions that are just part of life and turns them into an illness. Getting sad and experiencing displeasure with your life becomes major depressive disorder. Having an acute fear of spiders becomes arachnophobia. Having ups and downs becomes bipolar disorder. Feeling shy or anxious in social situations becomes social anxiety disorder. But once we accept these labels as part of who we are, it does nothing less than to increase our sense of hopelessness in overcoming these difficulties. It's an ingenious scam that renders millions to accept the drug treatment. Take a trip down to the psychiatrist office and you're almost certain to come out with a prescription for some type of medication. They have turned every human emotions that is not labeled pure happiness and joy into a disorder. Reason number 11. Many people overcame their social anxiety naturally. When we look at our social anxiety as a disorder, the problem can get worse. It makes us believe that we are stuck like this, which further ingrains in us the idea that nothing except medication can fix the problem. But this is also false. Many people improve and even completely reverse their social anxiety by using totally natural techniques such as acceptance and commitment therapy, mindfulness methods, comfort zone exercises, cognitive behavioral therapy, and exposure therapy. So if people that were diagnosed with social anxiety disorder can overcome this problem naturally without meds, doesn't the validity of social anxiety as a disorder loses its credibility? The answer is a resounding yes. No matter where you are in terms of your social anxiety at the moment, you can overcome it. But one of the first things to do is to lose the disorder label. If you want to learn how to accomplish this, head on over to the description box below and click on the first link. This will take you to a training video that I've created that debunks the 5 biggest myths about social anxiety that are keeping you stuck. Now remember, you are not alone in this. You can overcome your social anxiety. I've done it and many other people have done it also. All you need is a little direction on how to do it. Clicking the link below is the first step in your recovery.